Our first sleeper PC, we nicknamed him Hubert, rocked dual GTX 1080s, an Intel Core i9 processor, and hardline liquid cooling crammed into a pretty old Antec case. So how do we one-up something like that? Haha, oh, meet Hubert's brother, Dale. Sure, Dale is a bit smaller and way older, but don't let his outward appearance fool you because this build, sponsored by Intel, is about as fast as a gaming PC can be in 2017. We knew that for a small form factor sleeper, we needed a really unique case as a starting point. And our good friends over at Free Geek Vancouver were able to provide just that. They have everything there. This Moro Designs MD3 hails from 1982, making it older than literally everyone in our office. And it has clearly seen better days. With its dual floppy bays and 8-bit operating system, this puppy would have cost about $3,000 back in its day. But it hasn't worked in years, and even if it did, it is basically useless now. Cracking it open, other than this massive dust bunny, it's really not that bad though, all things considered. So with the internals removed, it was time to do some test fitting. Now, unfortunately, a full-sized high-end GPU is just a bit too long to fit. But Zotac had exactly the right medicine. This mini GTX 1080 Ti with a water cooling block. So, well, I guess we'll have to water cool the system now then. That's not gonna be easy in such a small space. And we're gonna be limited to a thick single radiator, but we're hoping that that's gonna be enough. Which brings us to the best part of every mod, angle grinding. From the factory, there's mounting for literally no modern hardware. So all of the cutouts for IO and mounting had to be created from scratch. For the motherboard here, it was basically a case of cut a bunch out with the angle grinder, then come in with the Dremel for a while, and finally finish off with a hand file. This one hole here actually took close to four hours since there was no going back if we slipped up. Now in 1982, 120 mil fans for PCs were not a thing at all. So we needed a new fan hole. With some help from this cable management tie, we cut it out using the Cannibal. And then at this stage, we also drilled lots of holes for everything to mount on the bottom. We decided to position the GPU above the motherboard. This ended up being a bit tricky because originally we were gonna use this 3D printed bracket, but it was really ugly and not in like a cool vintage way. So we opted to very slowly create mounting points for the back plate and holes for the IO to fasten it directly to the back of the chassis instead. Bringing us to test fit time. And it looks good. Now for the front of the floppy drives, just to be sure and, oh crap. Ooh, I guess that interferes with the radiator. No worries though, just a little bit of hole embiggenment and Dale is off to get a fresh coat of paint, but only on the inside. On that topic, let's talk about what's under the hood. For the CPU, we went with Intel's Core i7-8700K, making Dale as good as it gets for gaming. For our motherboard, we chose an ASUS Z370i Gaming with a Samsung NVMe SSD underneath this sexy heatsink. Then to keep the CPU cool, we're using an EK Supremacy full nickel block. We decided against an acrylic block since it'll actually have to help hold up the graphics card and also because you won't be able to see it anyway. For our radiator, we went with a 120 millimeter single rad from AlphaCool that is a massive 60 millimeters thick and then for our pump, we're using an EK SPC60 with a built-in cylindrical reservoir. We went with these super sexy white fittings and black acrylic tube, both provided by Bits Power for a sleek monochrome look. The first bend was one of the hardest since it needs to come around our PCI Express extender and then make a funky bend too. So we ended up just making a little snake out of black fittings in hopes that nobody would notice right here. The bending wasn't finished yet though. Next, this 90 degree from the pump to the res, and after that, a nice long tube from the GPU back to the radiator, 
both of which were made the perfect length with a bit of help from the bench sander. Now, we just need to do a bunch of little touch-ups to make it perfect, like splicing together the LEDs for the drives so they can be attached to the hard drive header, soldering on the front panel connector that we borrowed from another case so that the OG power button and LED would still work, gently removing the print and modem ports, massaging them with the uh, sander before inserting them, and then finally screwing and double-sided taping the fronts to the floppy drives back in their original positions. The insides we finished off with this sweet purple cathode from Bits Power, an unbelievable 800 watt, 80 plus titanium SFXL modular power supply from Silverstone, and some cleanup from Ivan the Cable Management King. Perfect. Now let's fill the loop, making sure to use a secondary power supply so that in the unlikely event that we have a spill. Oh, <laughs> Seriously. You guys forgot a plug on the radiator? Oh man. I mean, it, at least it wasn't out in the open. I'm an idiot. Yes, but now you're not alone, my friend. So my team of skilled modders removed the rad, added a plug and tightened everything down. Oh no, it leaked again. What are you guys even doing? This time the tubing is full. No worries though. What you're looking at right now is a perfectly legitimate strategy for emptying a loop, by the way. Yes, perfectly legitimate, totally not weird. So after swapping out some of the fittings, third time's a charm, we were finally leak free to see how Dale runs. And performance wise, oh, it runs. <laughs> Idle temps are in the 20s, and then under full synthetic load on the CPU and GPU for half an hour with the lid closed, Dale held steady at 80 degrees with the CPU still turboing to four gigahertz on all six cores. Though it should be noted that he did get a little loud in this scenario. As for games though, here things got even more impressive. Dale, in spite of his looks, can drag race with any challenger he is one of the fastest small form factor computers on the market with frames per second in the hundreds on Ultra. And even during heavy extended gaming sessions, he stayed reasonably quiet with GPU temperatures maxing out at 53 degrees. So let's bask then in the glory of Dale and look out for our next addition to the sleeper family, Margaret. So thanks for watching guys. If you just liked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured. How about a Core i7 processor, even if you can't get this case to put it in, at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.